Well, as the mainstream media catches up to the chaos in Anaheim, similar outrage is brewing in Dallas. Hundreds of protesters there taking to the streets. This after an officer and was shot and or an officer shot and killed a suspect that was reportedly unarmed. Police in riot gear responding to the demonstrations. According to police, the victim, James Harper, was shot after leading police on a chase. The officer claims he was fearing for his life when he shot Harper dead. But the victim's families and hundreds of protesters aren't buying it. And just like the Anaheim case, some protesters believe it was racially motivated and is just one example of a corrupt police force there. For more right now, Anna Marlin, writer for the Dallas Observer, joins me now. Anna, welcome. Uh, so Hi. what more can you tell us about this case? Um, uh, at this point, what we know is that the Dallas police received what they now believe was a bogus 911 call yesterday afternoon, um, claiming that there was an attempted kidnapping at this residence on Dixon Street. Uh, the caller claimed that there was, were five or six uh, Latino males dragging a black male who was tied up into the house. So um, the story from the police department is that they arrived on the scene, um, knocked on the door, uh, attempted to open it, and then um, uh, went, yelled police. And when um, the people in the house uh, heard that it was the police, they tried to run out the back door. Um, the police say that they pursued uh, all, there were four men in the house. They say they pursued all of them. And the man who was ultimately shot, James Harper, um, apparently they're saying got into a physical fight or three different physical fights with the officer, the last one culminating in Harper being shot and killed. And um, any idea where that fake call originated from? The police don't know. Police Chief Brown said at a press briefing last night that when they tried to call that number back, it rerouted to a number that was out of the area and the phone call was answered by someone who didn't speak English. So while they've released a transcript of that call, they haven't actually released um, the audio of that call because they say it has evidentiary value. Hmm, okay, and so after this incident, there has been protests going on, hundreds I hear. Can you tell us the magnitude of these protests, what they're protesting against and, and what they're demanding? Uh, the protests last night began probably shortly after the shooting around 5.30 or 6, and hundreds of people poured into the street in this neighborhood near, near the corner of uh, Dixon and Berkwin where this happened. Um, people uh, in South Dallas, which is a predominantly poor and African-American area, are frustrated with a recent spate of officer-involved shootings. There have been, at this point, 14 shootings in Dallas involving police um, shooting people, and eight of those have been fatal. So the protest last night um, was essentially uh, that the people in the area felt that they were being uh, racially discriminated against and that the shooting had been racially motivated. And now what has happened to the accused police officer in this case? Uh, the officer is on paid leave pending an internal investigation. After that, the case will go to a grand jury for consideration. Okay, so th this tension over there in Dallas, has this been brewing for a long time? Um, or does this, is this kind of like a culmination of things that have been going on for a while? And from what you've seen as a reporter there, does it appear to be a systematic problem within the police force there? Um, I think we don't know anything until the investigation is completed. Uh, I wouldn't be prepared to say whether or not it's a systematic issue. But what we do know is that there have been three officer-involved shootings um, involving young black men in poor neighborhoods just since the beginning of June. And so I would say that, you know, frustration in those communities has been building. The protesters I spoke to on the street last night felt that they were being targeted, that if somebody in their community died at the hands of a police officer, that it didn't, um, that it didn't matter. Uh, and I would say that it's, something that perennial, perennially comes up in Dallas like any other major city. And in these previous instances, were the, were the victims armed or, or were they unarmed, as in, as in this case, which is, 
which is what, what stirs controversy a lot of the time, police resorting to pulling the trigger when, when the suspect is not armed. Both of the suspects in the previous in incidents were armed. Uh, the, first, the first one was a 21-year-old man named John Husband. He was pulled over for, I think, failing to signal. Um, and when the officer, I think, discovered that he had a warrant, he attempted to handcuff him. And the officer said that he had resisted being handcuffed and reached for a gun. And so at that point, the officer shot him in the back. So obviously, um, people in the community didn't uh, quite buy that he had had a gun. There was difference of opinion between the community and the police there about what had happened. The other incident took place at a Taco Bell, and it was also, there was also an armed suspect. Now, can you describe the protests that have erupted following this latest incident? Um, have they gotten out of hand, or do they remain mostly peaceful? Can you just kind of describe what has been going on following this? The main protest was last night. It brought out hundreds of people into the street. Um, other media outlets were reporting that there had been fistfights in the crowd. I didn't witness that. I was down there for about two and a half hours last night. And what I saw was that people were angry and frustrated. And there were a couple of middle-aged ladies yelling at the cops, but I didn't see any violence. There were women and children and families and just people standing out in the street trying to figure out what was going on. Now, we have been cover covering extensive extensively here from day one, the the shooting in Anaheim and, and the protests that have resulted, people outraged over what they see as an injustice. What parallels can you draw, if any, between what's going on in Anaheim and now what's going on in Dallas? I mean, I think as far as I know, the situation in, in Anaheim, the protests are ongoing. There have been several arrests. Um, I believe there has been more violence at these protests, though I don't know. Um, I think the parallel you can draw between the two is that people are complaining about feeling harassed by the police forces in their town or feeling like the police don't come into their community unless it's to arrest someone. That was uh, something that I heard several times last night, that uh, people felt like they didn't see police in their neighborhood unless it was to make an arrest and that when they called police, they weren't responsive. So I, I think we see similar frustrations and it's something that police departments in both towns are obviously hopefully after these incidents becoming more aware of and will work with the community to address all right anna thanks so much for coming on the show and telling us all about what's happening over there in dallas that was anna Mer merlin writer for the dallas observer